At this moment of the game, the game between the Cowboys and Chargers is tied at 10-10. to -10. The fourth quarter just started, 15 minutes left, third and 11, and this was the point that Dak Prescott caught fire, in my opinion, because this was the point in which Dak Prescott ultimately made a very, very nice play, was able to find Tony Pollard, who leaked out late, and ultimately hit him for a 60-yard gain. Now, of course, Tony Pollard did most of the work, but never underestimate the fact that Dak Prescott extended this play. Never underestimate that he basically almost got sacked, but was able to kind of get out of there. Keep in mind, the Chargers do have a really good front four, and ultimately, Prescott saw Tony Pollard. And he was able to throw it cross body and he hit him and Pollard, of course, broke the tackle and took it 60 yards. But these are the moments where, in my opinion, Dak Prescott really stepped up for the Cowboys. And we're going to analyze from this point forward. We're going to analyze the tape and really discuss some of the play calling, some of what Dak Prescott was able to do and how he ultimately came up clutch for the Dallas Cowboys. Very, very fired up for this film breakdown. Let's just get right into it. After a holding penalty, as well as a four yard run, the Dallas Cowboys are already second and 12. And this is a key moment within the game because ultimately you don't want to continue to kick field goals. You got to score points. You got to get a touchdown on the board. Second and 12, you got to pick up at least half the yards to pick the first down up. And Dak Prescott's going to do a really nice job delivering the pass to CD Lamb on this one. Climbs the pocket, hits him for 15 yards. And this right here was the moment, in my opinion, that really changed the momentum of the game for the Cowboys. Because up to this point, the Cowboys had only scored one touchdown and one field goal. And they had some missed opportunities. And this could have easily been another moment in which the Chargers got off the field, especially after the penalty on first down. But ultimately, Prescott was able to do a really nice job going through his progressions. And he hit CeeDee Lamb on a really, really nice route on this one. Lamb is going to run a whip route to the inside. It's just a very clean route, in my opinion, by CD Lamb. Does a really, really nice job to be able to sell this. And ultimately, he's able to create that separation that was needed. And you see Dak Prescott climbing the pocket was ultimately the factor within this play. You can see in the you can see with the end zone angle that Prescott is going to be pressured a little bit and he buys that extra time. He buys that extra second that he needs, climbs the pocket, sees it and gets the ball out. Just a really really nice play if you guys ask me. This was second and 12, the 15 yard pass ultimately picked up the first down. So you got a second and two here. CD Lamb's going to go into motion and with that motion, the Chargers are going to have this defensive back follow Lamb. That's going to indicate to Dak Prescott that this is man-to-man -man coverage, and he's going to know exactly where he's going to go with the ball. He sees Brandon Cooks here, who's going to be in man coverage, and ultimately a switch happens within this because this is exactly how the Chargers have played this in the past, and Dak Prescott's going to just throw it out there, and Brandon Cooks is going to go and find the football. To me, this is a really, really nice job by the Dallas Cowboys to put C.D. Lamb in motion to tell you exactly what the defense is doing, especially in goal line. I think red zone issues have been a big factor as to why the Cowboys haven't scored as many points because outside the red zone, the Cowboys are a top five offense statistically and in the red zone, they've struggled, but to be able to put a guy in motion, which indicates what it's going to be and then take your shot on a design play is exactly what the Dallas Cowboys needed. On top of that, you see the Chargers bring seven guys on this one and Tony Pollard does a really, really nice shot picking up Derwin James. Fantastic job. It does not get better than this by the running back. The O-line tight ends all pick up the other six guys. And then Dak Prescott throws it out there for Brandon Cook, who's in man-to-man -man coverage. And is able to beat his guy and ultimately get the catch. That's a really, really nice shot. And this was the touchdown. So at this point, the score is 17-10. to And of course, with that, the Chargers not only got the ball back, but they drove downfield and scored a touchdown themselves. So now the Dallas Cowboys get the ball for a second time. And after a five-yard false start penalty on the offensive lineman, Dak Prescott on first and 15 is going to take the pass and hit Michael Gallup for a five-yard gain. Really nice job just to kind of get the chains going. So after that five-yard pass, on second down, Dak Prescott's actually going to get pressured. He's going to end up taking a sack on this one. To me, if the quarterback does not get sacked on this one, there's opportunities down the field. But unfortunately, you're going to see Cleo Mack, Bullrush, Tyron Smith right back into the quarterback. And because of that, Prescott has to try to make something happen. And ultimately, he's not able to because the defensive tackle basically comes around and makes the play. Now, that was second and 10. And the Cowboys lost eight yards on that one. So now they're in a third and 18. And ultimately, Dak Prescott's going to just take off running because he's once again pressured. But fortunately for the Dallas Cowboys, there was a holding penalty on the other side of the field. If you guys keep an eye here on C.D. Lamb, he's going to end up getting held and the referee's going to throw the flag on, on that one right there 
And just like that, you're going to get the five yards and an automatic first down. Now, keep in mind, after the nine-yard scramble here by Prescott, it should have been fourth and nine. But the Dallas Cowboys catch a break. And then on first and 10 on the very next play, Brandon Cooks is going to get a jet sweep, and he's going to take this one for 14 yards. A really nice job by some of the blocking downfield, if you guys ask me. Great job here by the right tackle to jump out in front of this defensive end, force the defensive end to the inside. Ultimately, that's the main thing that lets this play hit. After two plays that ended up getting only four yards, the Dallas Cowboys are now in the third and six. To me, this is the play of the game right here by Dak Prescott. To me, this is equivalent to that massive Tony Pollard play from earlier in the fourth quarter. You're going to see Dak Prescott connect with C.D. Lamb on this one for 18 yards. And this is the theme with the Dallas Cowboys right now. The offensive line is underperforming. This offensive line has the upside to be a top five offensive line. From an individualized perspective, some of the guys here are very, very, very good. And it's just not translating right now. Now, this one here was not on the offensive line, as you guys can see. You get an inside linebacker to blitz. This one's on the running back to step up and pick up. And on this one, the running back does do a nice job picking it up, but he does get pushed right back into the quarterback as well. And this is a great job by Dak Prescott to keep two hands onto the football. He's going to roll through there, climb, extend the play, roll to the left of the screen. He sees C.D. Lamb coming across on a crossing route, and he hits C.D. Lamb in stride. And Lamb picks up the first down. This was third and six. These are the moments within a game that ultimately allow you to win. These moments right here is what allows you to have success. And C.D. Lamb does a great job being able to kind of create that separation and get open. Now, after that 18-yard pass, the Cowboys chose to run the ball on first and 10. They only picked up one yard, and now it's a second and nine. And Dak Prescott's going to play action, and the broadcast crew told us that we had a wide-open tight end running down the middle of the seam, and Prescott missed him. And I almost feel like sometimes things get taken out of context. And what I mean by that is you have to understand that there's a whole element to this play before Dak Prescott can even think about throwing the pass. So Dak Prescott right away has to sell this play. It's a draw play action. So he's going to fake like it's a draw. He's going to play action the ball. And then he has to hit his three-step drop. And he has to get his eyes downfield. He has to see where the safety is before he can look at the tight end. And from the moment he takes his hands off the ball where he's actually getting ready to throw the ball right there, you can see 61's already in his face. And 61's already pressuring Prescott. And he may not be able to get the ball out. He may not be able to throw an accurate pass. And that's not on Dak Prescott. That's on the offensive line for not giving him enough time to finish the play action within this this play, for him to actually have the time to throw the ball downfield. You know, it's easy for someone sitting in the broadcast booth to say Dak Prescott should have thrown it to the guy down the seam. Uh, he should have possibly been able to read this play without looking anywhere other than the safety and just throw it. Unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. Dak has to read the safeties. He has to see where these guys are because anyone can rotate any way that they want. And your pass may not be open as you get ready to actually throw the ball. So to me, the thing with this play is when Dak Prescott actually takes the hand off the football to throw the pass, he has pressure in his face. He's not going to be able to get the ball out. In fact, that guy ends up getting to him and hitting him. And Dak barely gets the ball out to the tight end. And that was second and nine. After that one, the Cowboys were in a third and nine. And I feel like this was the moment that basically iced the game for the Cowboys. Or at least this was the moment that helped him ice the game. Second and nine. Dak Prescott's going to hit Brandon Cooks at the top of the screen for an 11-yard pass. To me, the fact that the Cowboys were able to convert this right here helped them win because now the Chargers had to start using their timeouts. They had to try to conserve clock and they had to get off the field. And from this point forward, the Cowboys just ran a conservative game plan where they just ran the ball a couple of times. They took the safe options within the play and they basically ran the clock down and the Chargers had to use all of their timeouts as well. So this is just a really, really nice shot by Dak Prescott. Ultimately, they got the field goal out of this drive. And to me, Dak Prescott came up massive in this play. For all the shit that people have talked about Dak Prescott over the past couple of weeks, the guy stepped up and he got it done. Dak Prescott may not be Patrick Mahomes. He may not be Josh Allen. But Dak Prescott's a pretty damn good quarterback. And he's one of those quarterbacks you can definitely win with. And he definitely stepped up against the Chargers on the road. And he got it done. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. A lot different than the typical videos we create on these channels. But I did want to just create something to kind of talk about Dak Prescott and give him credit where credit is due. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. And I will see you guys next time with another video.